welcome back <clears throat> if you watched the last video you saw um, I had some problems with the um, functioning of this pistol um, while I was out at the range <clears throat> I couldn't see how fast this um, slide cycle I couldn't see that until I got home and started to edit the videos and realized that um, the slide was fully recoiling and I was first first issue I had was a problem with the uh, the ejector I'm, I'm sorry the extractor holding um, tension on the uh, case and withdrawing it from the chamber it um, in the beginning of uh, our range session, it didn't uh, didn't seem to want to extract at all, and then uh, later on, it would uh, extract and then uh, fail to eject. So there was some uh, early on. There were some changes I wanted to uh, to make to the gun. And uh, when I when I first built this gun, I was kind of on the fly. I had no drawings. I uh, pretty much built this from what I uh, envisioned. And uh, some of the uh, some of the components uh, were added and and kind of designed on the fly. So, um, and it was shapes that were easier to, to, um, uh, to make. So my original extractor is this guy here. And I'm going to pull this one out and lay them side by side and so I could talk about them. But, um. Uh, this first uh, slow motion clip is going to be with this extractor. Let's see here. This extractor and this ejector in the gun. And we're going to go through, uh, we'll go through the, the changes, the mods that were made uh, since the last video. So, here's a uh, clip of the the function with uh, with the original parts in the gun. So as you can see, the uh, the the brass tended to bounce off the face. Let me get this here. The brass is this is this extractor would pull the brass out of the gun, and it would hit the ejector, and it would bounce off this this flat face here. And forward into the barrel or just back into the gun so the first thing to do was to correct that problem and it didn't <coughs> excuse me the, the um, 
I never was happy with the uh, the strength of this this big old lever arm sticking out of out of the side of here. So um, what I did is made this new. Made this new extractor. Let me get it out of here. Okay. So that's out. Take out the spring and the plunger. I added a. Uh, I also added this longer spring. So here's the new part. Next to the old part. And dimensionally from the claw to this peg is the same between the two. This um surface is contacted by the by the plunger is a little is a little different get my pointer here um so the distance from from here to to here is the same between the two where they mostly differ and what makes this one better is this area clear back here so that when um, so when the uh, the casing is let's see get this in here when the casing is withdrawn from the barrel from the chamber you know contact the ejector and be pushed out like this and as it makes this turn it doesn't hit the surface here but is able to pivot farther out of the gun and what I can tell, now my frame rate on this camera is not high enough to see all the the complete path of this brass, but what it appears to be doing is spinning, and if anything, it hits the mouth, hits somewhere about here, and then it either starts to turn this way, but the ultimate effect of it is to get it to... Um, to clear the ejection port and there's a clip for you to watch here that um, shows the uh, slow motion it shows the ejection with just with the uh, stronger spring on the plunger and with this new extractor so I'm gonna play that right now
Okay, so that was uh, that was ejection with the new extractor and the old ejector. So it the uh, the extraction and injection were improved over the uh, over just the old extractor, but. Um, I had, I had, when I made this, I made this, um, I made this original ejector, and it was an afterthought. I had not intended this gun to be, um, originally to be magazine fed. I just wanted to know what it felt like to fire with this, um, slide on the angle to the barrel bore axis. So, I added a... You see here the slot between the between the fire control group and the frame here. I have the I added a slot, and this is uh, one of the rear uh, slide rails. And this ejector slides down in there like that. Let's see, and is captured on the top by the slide when the slide's in place. So if you see this this little projection here that is the uh, that's the ejector that the brass that's a as the brass is withdrawn from the uh, the barrel, it strikes it strikes that ejector there, and the effect of it is to pivot this way out of the gun. One thing I wanted to experiment was with um, advancing the. Uh, the ejection so I made this new ejector and I have this contact point here farther forward in the gun so you see where you see where the and Apologize for the lighting today, but let's see. So you see where this contact surface is in relation to the front of the uh, slide rail on the old and on the new. I moved this portion out, and we'll get to that in a minute. So this portion is moved forward. And this this is also moved forward, where they line up on the at the rear. Back here, it's the same between the two. And here you can see that the contact surface, this contact surface, is moved forward to here from here on the old. So, the thought there was to um, <clears throat> take advantage of the, the velocity of the slide earlier in its recoil cycle, rather than at the back of the, uh, the end of the travel. <clears throat> so... <clears throat> Let's see. I got ahead of a oh here well it's seen better days but this bullet's been run through there so much it's set back but it's just uh it's a dummy with it just got bondo in the primer pocket but anyway
so when the slide is when the slide is forward this top round is down it's down here and as it comes back one thing we want to do is by um, advancing the ejection is we're going to clear this spent casing out of the gun before this top round has as much time to move up and interfere with it from below. So we don't want this coming up and interfering with this um, the spent case being pulled out of the chamber. So that's going to occur that's going to occur a little bit um, earlier to to miss that top round and then um, let's see here and we're going to have we're going to have a little higher slide velocity than we would if we waited a little little longer for uh, for the brass to contact that ejector surface so with the uh, the new extractor and the new ejector in the gun I ran some uh, some empties through it and we'll watch that uh, we'll watch that uh, slow motion clip here and then come back to um, looking at the the way these um, pieces work together and I might draw a little bit and explain some of what the considerations are so here's the clip with the new extractor and the new ejector. So as you can see, the the brass is thrown more radially, radially out of the uh, out of the ejection port. It doesn't spend anywhere near as much time bouncing uh, fore and aft. And a couple things are are part of that. Um, one thing I have to go back to is, let's just start here, if we can see it. If we look into the, we look at the breech face, you see that this raised surface up here is one rim thickness above the actual uh, breech face so that when the rim when the when the brass is sitting in here one thing you notice here is that 
that rim. Shit, now some of this has been filed away. To, some of this has been filed away here. That's what I had to do to fit the new uh, extractor. So this flat we see here is clearance for the inside here of this extractor. But when we look at this brass it's hard to see it here it looks like it's sticking out a little bit but uh, see it's just about even so that recess is you see right there it's just about even see right here so that controls this round. Look at it like this: is um, around if uh, this is our breech face, and this round sitting in it. It controls it in in this um, plane, and this e extractor is spring loaded. It comes in and pushes in on it here. And it pushes it that way. So in the gun, it would be pushing it that way. Well, if we look down here, that's, some of that's got to be cut away. In the second prototype, I might modify this and make this cut. This cut right here is where the ejector rides. This little, that little nub comes up through there and hits the brass right on the edge there. Hits the casing. Kicks it out. So, <clears throat> there's not a wall in the effort to uh, give this a little more room to, uh, to strip the top round. It was to improve feeding. Uh, I knocked off this little, um, this little portion of the raised surface here, and so when this extractor pushes in, the the bottom part of it is pushing against that wall there, right there. But it's free for this brass to push down this way. So what I modified this ejector to have this surface right here. This one right here. And what that does is the brass comes is drawn back into it. It holds it on the side right here right like that and now this brass can't push that way into the gun so that's on this side and on this other side we have the extractor grabs it here so This becomes controlled. It's in a it's in a pocket that is runs from runs from about here around to here. And when this material was down here, I had halfway decent uh, extraction and ejection because this round could not slide out of the bottom like this. It couldn't slide down. So it was held pretty good just with the uh, extractor. And then the ejector so it was caught. It would have been 
it would have been caught under here too and you'd see this metal up to here and it worked pretty good i had uh i had decent ejection but i had to replace to do something to replace this surface right there so that keeps this bear with me a second that keeps let me try this here pencil that keeps the casing from going that way and, and losing control so now I'll put this uh, put this extractor back in so that's in there and when the gun the the uh, case loads up into the kind of snaps in if we shake it now it won't fall out so it snaps under if you see the how much this um, projects with the brass in and it'll be a little less with it out see the projection here is a little less so we snap this in here it, it's held on this side against this wall see it's held against here and then our ejector is going to come up and you see that part that sticks up past the rim and the uh, um, extractor groove that captures it and it doesn't allow the brass to go that way so there's only one way for it to go and that's to kick out of the gun that way so uh, that's the surface right right here right here so the um, let's see put it in here and see huh? the tension the tension on this extractor is controlled with the strength of the spring and how f the angle of that surface on the ejector. So it'd be the angle of this, this surface here, that angle, the farther forward it tips this way, the, the more pressure on the extractor, it's going to push it into the rim of the case so it can it can be too much to where this uh, extractor won't want to jump see right now it's it's contacting the extractor groove in the in the case and it's got a certain amount of force to snap over and I can also feel that pushing the barrel back I can feel that it's pushing that brass in like that so we have to have enough to uh to hold it we have to have enough um spring tension and and inward force to hold that case but not so much that it will not load so that would be loaded in a chamber and then the 
So this is it all together and it's much more reliable than it was before. So if I could, let's see if this, let's see if this helps at all. We're going to have our base of our case with the rim and then the extractor groove like this. It comes up. And on the one side we have our well, let's draw this first. So typically we try to keep a, a recess on the breech face like this. And we want to have as little exposed or not supported as possible. So any clearance we cut into here, we don't want to, we don't, for the, uh, for the extractor, we don't want to come up past this point that going that way. Because this is a pressure vessel inside of here when this fires. So we want that supported with some steel. So our breech face has a recess and our extractor hooks in here. Well, let's see, let's draw this the way it is here. This comes back kind of like this. And it hinges kind of on an arc like this. So it comes in and hooks like that. And on this side, we have to, we have to cut through here. So we have a, a slot in the, in the face of the breech that can contact this rim down here and give some force in that direction. It'll pivot on this extractor and swing this brass out of the gun like that. So the ejector that, um, the ejector that I have has a portion of it that forms a little post there that keeps the brass from the brass from sliding that direction and then there's a surface here on the ejector so when the brass is moving back it contacts this area right here it can't go it can't go that way because of this portion. So the only thing it, it wants to do, it gets hung up against this side and this extractor is pushing it that way. There's quite a bit of, ver now the diameter doesn't vary as much as this rim thickness can vary from, uh, on the nine, nine uh, Luger can vary from Leaves fifty grand down to down forty thousandths, so it's ten thousand. So this could be ten thousandths gap or more from the extractor claw to the rim, but the diameter is held to a closer tolerance. So while this extractor is grabbing the case here to pull it this way. It's actually pushing against this area right here. It's pushing it that way into this, into this recess or into this protrusion on the ejector. And that's what's actually keeping it in the gun. If you look at some looking from the front of the breech face, you'll have a firing pinhole here and your extractor will come in somehow like this and then if they cut this away this brass is sitting here um 
they'll try to keep some raised portion down below here. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to be clear, but that something raised down here so that this brass doesn't want to slide that way. As soon as it's free, the barrel is going to want to push that with the ejectors pushing down on it like this. Got it up here. We got it going this way. And in this front view, this is pushing on it like this. So we have a a groove cut in it here for the ejector to stick up. And then forward of that ejection surface, we have this flat here. And that traps, that traps this brass, it won't allow it to go this way. So it has to get spun out of the gun. The one thing, uh, the one thing I do have at this point, though, is a half where, um, The uh, certain certain contour uh, or certain bullet profiles, I'm not clear of this area here. If I'm ejecting on fired and on fire cartridge, so as that bullet tries to, as it tries to. As the gun opens up and this tries to pivot out of here, it's contacting right here. But I know that it, let's see if I can find it. I know that the extractor had a pretty good hold of it because the, the one case I ran through like that, and I don't know if I'm be able to find it, but the one, the one I ran through like that, Actually, actually marked a bullet. I might have thrown it back in the bag with all the. Yeah. I threw it back in the bag. I'm not going to be able to find it. There's a whole bunch in there. But, um,. It tells me it, the the extractor's uh, doing its job a lot better than we saw in the in the uh, the range day video. So what else to say about it? Um, I'm going to some of the the I'm going to do next is. Uh, make a one-piece guide rod. I don't know if you can see, but that's, uh, this is a separate piece from the rod, this piece here, in the, uh, the takedown slash, would be a slide stop pin, uh, goes through this hole. So, it sits in here like this. So I want to make a one piece right now it's it's screwed together and that that causes some problems but I make a one piece guide rod and clear this area here so that it can be symmetrical hopefully uh, right now I don't have that channel cut out even so I'll move this this surface move it back and I should be able to make it symmetry. It would just, it would have, uh, it would be relief back here, top and bottom. So that's that. Um, get another view on this ejector.
just a hammer. And this is the disconnector. If you see the transfer bar, trigger transfer bar, it pushes down. So when this is out of battery, when the slide's out of battery, the transfer bar goes down and it can't, it won't strike the sear. But when this, when this is down, it won't strike the sear. If it comes up, then the hammer can drop. Other than that, uh, I got these changes here. I got these other ones I want to do. Uh, probably a, um, a little nicer firing pin as well. Uh, I left all the machining and all the tooling marks in this. Uh, except for those that uh, impeded function. So... I don't know if you can tell. Oh, I have a, um, I have a heavier uh, recoil spring in my, uh, in the cigar box that this, that this pistol stays in. So, I also want to make it uh, slide. This is probably the crudest part of the gun. Is this takedown pin? Um, I'll make actual side stop takedown pin and sits flush. It's not a problem. It stays in the gun. It, it's never fallen out of me while firing, but um, I got to watch that I don't move the gun out of battery by touching this. Right now, if you see that, it pulls it back. But uh, that's kind of a small thing. But as I was saying, there's a lot of tooling marks in this gun, but it's smooth as glass. So, anyway, hopefully next uh, video we see is uh, another day at the range, and uh, hopefully, every, hopefully these uh, updates work, and then we'll press on with whatever's next. Other than that, thanks for stopping by.